Hey, what's up, guys? Sharkskull here, and um, after a few days, I am back. Uh, we are doing another replay, of course. Um, uh, I was having internet issues, that's kind of why I was gone, but luckily now my internet's actually better. So I'm probably going to do live streams more often then, because I won't have internet issues during the stream, which was a problem last time. But now it shouldn't be, so... Um, yeah, so, so now uh, we're doing this replay. Let's continue on the video. So we got a Torbjorn player, I believe. I think he just plays Torbjorn. Um, I, actually, I'll just read the email off, and we'll see if he just plays Torbjorn in the game. In this game, I play Torbjorn. I am mainly a person who plays DPS with Soldier, Reaper, and Zenyatta as well. I'm not going to lie. I had some moments where I completely missed my shots on the Ash. But I think you have... But you think you have to wait for later parts of the each round because that's why I f that's when I feel better or when I feel I do better. My username is Gnome, by the way. My rank is high gold. Hopefully you review this and keep up with the good videos. Okay, thank you. Um. So yeah, we got Torbjorn on our attack. This is fine actually. Um. So especially since it's a payload map, you can you know put your turret on the payload. You only have. Um, a Sigma for a shield, which is, eh, it's okay. Um, you got Diva Matrix, which is fine, so I think your turret, or just you being here, is fine in general. Torbjorn's actually really good in the meta as well, so... Um, honestly, I, I don't think it's a bad pick. Um, at all, I have nothing, I have no problems with you picking Torbjorn. Um, your team right now, you have a... Two off healers, which, you know, kind of sucks. You won't have much healing. Um, yeah, I think there's not really anything else to discuss. You have a Farah. She can't really do much because she doesn't have a Mercy, but... You know, that's that's just the your teammates. Um, you're in gold. Actually, hold on. Sorry, I had this sped up, but... You're, you're in gold, so you're probably not going to have to worry about... You probably don't have to worry about team comp too much. So that turret was obviously meh. You, you, I think you're just trying to throw it up there for some ult charge. Um, okay, so it's, it kind of seems like, yeah, I want to. So yeah, I'll try instead of just throwing. It seems like what you're doing a lot is just throwing your turret a lot, just in random places. I'll try and think about like where you want your turret before you place it because. If you just randomly place it everywhere, um, it's obviously sometimes it's not going to get no like no value at all. So right now, I think the best option was for you is just to wait uh, for the payload and you just set it on there uh, before your team pushed in. Also, you didn't really need that health pack. Um, I think it's fine. Right, this is fine, just spam. Um, I would probably wait for your overload, unless like you're getting fully dived on. Because overload is like a really good ability against dive, because you know, you can just delete tanks. So instead of using it, you're kind of using it as a getaway ability, that's fine. But you weren't all the way low, you still had some health left, you could have fought back for a little bit longer. Got some more all charge, you didn't really need to. You know, like, go in. That was, that was fine. That was a decent headshot. And your D.Va followed up on it. You're going on a nice, like, a nice flank here. I think I would prefer you to flank if uh, you're going, like, up on the high ground. Because being down here with your turret, your turret's susceptible to basically everything they have. Um, so they have freaking... They have ball. But do they have... Oh, they have triple tank. Huh, I didn't even know. This is, I think this might be open queue. I didn't notice that before. Um, yeah, this is either open queue, uh, quick play, or competitive. I didn't even notice. I think it's open queue competitive. But yeah, I didn't actually notice that, so that's cool. But <laughs> they have triple tank. They have a ball and on a brig. They have actually a really weird comp. 
Yeah, that's kind of like a tracking thing. Um, you have to get used to or to predict that ball's movement just a little bit better. Um, also kind of seems like your sense might be too fast for you. Because I think it's like messing you up. Finding where people are. Well, that was a little crazy. Um, a thing with his Molten Core, uh, you can actually like spread it out more. I don't know if you know this, but like if you uh, put, it, put it in just like one spot, you just tap R2 or uh, right bumper, if, just whatever console you're playing on. If you just tap it, it just goes like in a really wide area on its own. So try and like spread it out. Uh, not just put it in one spot because then you're just like stacking it on top and it doesn't do anything. It doesn't like stack damage or anything like that. So it's better to just try and spread it out. And also as Torbjorn, um, if you're not, if you don't have a control of the payload with your tanks, uh, I would just go like on the high ground, like kind of where you're, I see your Reaper. Um, like it's fine to just put your t turret in like weird angles. So you at least get some value. Like, yeah, this, this I like. That was, um, that was more of just a game sense thing. You got to know like where that hog is at all times. Just to, you know, be careful of hooks like that. Um, yeah, it seems like you're going to get away. That was a good use of your overload too. Um, like as soon as you got hooked, you just used it. <laughs> that was a good shot on the ash. I also kind of like these flanks. It's, um, you're actually getting decent value out of them. Which is nice. Um, as Torbjorn, you don't really want to be going aggressive, like, into the enemy team with Overload. It's like the basic no uh, game knowledge of not wraithing in to the enemy team as Reaper. Because you're going in with an ability that's basically your getaway ability. So, like, once you go in with it and let's say you just got no value out of it then you'd just be you'd be you'd be dead because um you have no escape ability and you're just going in with overload and see like you're you're in like a pretty bad place might be able to get away if you're lucky it seems like they're missing they're missing you a lot so you're good that was a good shred of the tank um, yeah, Torbjorn's, like I said, he's really good at killing tanks with his, uh, secondary fire and overload. Um. As Torbjorn, I'll probably, like I said, prefer you if you're just, like, back more. Torbjorn's not really a close-range hero, even though he has that, um, secondary fire. The thing is, like, uh, you, as Torbjorn, you probably want to be charging your ult more. Your ult's really good. Um, your secondary fire is really only there if you get dived on in your overload. That's the only, honestly, the only reason why you're there. You don't want to go aggressive with it. Because, like I said, you'll basically just be going in with no, uh, abilities and you just die. Don't go type, dive Torbjorn on him. Like, this is fine though. You secondary firing that ball though, that's fine. I don't mind that. It's just like when you're going into the enemy team, then uh, that's kind of where it gets risky. It's getting good focus on the tanks. And also, like, like I said, your aim might be too fast or you might need more aim assist, either one. Oh, looks like controller died or something. <laughs> uh, controller problems, man. Pretty decent shots too. I like your shots as um Torben, they aren't bad. Your primary fire shots. Um, I think you said that you play Reaper. Um, I don't remember, but you're you're kind of playing a little bit like a Reaper playstyle as Torbjorn. He's not he's not really um what you can do with Reaper because Re Reaper just basically has a getaway ability. You can still get stunned and stuff when you have your overload. See, like, how you used it there was just kind of how a Reaper would use it to get away with Wraith. Um, like, you just took a little bit of damage and you kind of just try to run away with it. Um, 
that's like you don't really want to do that because overload's not that type of ability it's more of just an ability if you get dived on or um yeah basically that's it if you're getting dived on and you're just kind of going a little bit of aggressive to kill tanks and that's basically what you what do you want to use it for Like, this is where I don't mind you being. Torbjorn's a hero that is good playing with tanks. Kind of like Junkrat is. So. Yeah, this is like a little bit crazy. Like going like this far in. I prefer you to be back more. It's basically what I'm trying to say. Oh, at least he was assaulted. I think you guys are winning though. Um, like I say in every video, probably, I think I've said this in every video, just keep track of all charges, it's really important. Um, especially, uh, excuse me, especially if you have your old, you want to keep track of the Lucio. Or do they have a Lucio? No, they have on a brig, so you don't really have to pay attention to healer rolls that much. So they have no counter to it. But still, it's good to pay attention to ults. Yeah, this this is fine. They're not really paying attention to you, but... This... Oh, I think you're ulting. Um, where's your team at? You got your Sigma right there. Yeah, I think this is fine. I think this ult's fine. As long as you, like, spread it out all over the cart. Then that'd be really nice. Yeah, it's like putting uh, your ult on objectives. It's basically like a, it's basically like minefield. The way you want to use it, like wrecking balls minefield. Like it's better to put it um, in choke points or on the point, just to deny areas. That's basically how you want to use it most of the time. All right, going up here. Yeah. So, like, you kind of just... You fed there a little bit. So, like I said, I'll prefer you to try and go back more. Yeah, like, you being on cart there, that's kind of what I like. Because going aggressive with overload is, like, fine sometimes, but... Um, it's only good if you know they don't have, like, abilities that can stun you or just destroy you, just like what happened there. Um, but yeah, I think that seems to be your main problem right now is just, uh, your aggression. You seem to be just going too aggressive. You're going like how a Reaper would go in. And yeah, I think that's kind of where you're getting this habit is just going in with Torbjorn. It's just, you're playing Reaper and, you know, that's fine. That happens. I honestly, it happens with me sometimes with two with Junkrat. I get aggression mixed up and I go too aggressive with Junkrat because I play Genji. A lot too. And like they're basically completely two different playstyles. So you just gotta know the playstyle of each hero. Like what your aggression should be most of the time. You seem to be getting your ult pretty fast. Which is really good at Stormrun. That was also pretty good deny of the air. You probably wanna prefer I would prefer you honestly to put your ult in their spawns. Because then you can deny them of getting out of their spawn. And be forced to either die on it or just wait it out. You know, like, denying them time is always good. This is a good flank. I like this. Going after that Bastion. That's good, um, target priority. Because, you know, he could probably do high damage if he's not dealt with. It's always good to go after targets like that. Also, probably next, in, uh, since you kill like the high damage hero, would go after stall heroes that they have. So they're, I think they still have ball. Yeah, they do. Yeah, after you try and kill this bastion, you also have your ult. Yeah, try to get your ult and then just spread it all over. Nice. Yeah, that's good. That's what I like to see. Right, right now you're kind of like in their back line which I guess is fine because they don't know but it seems like you guys are losing yeah we'll see if you guys lose this you might 
It's probably better if you uh, secondary fired the ball because you know he's a big tank and you just destroy him with all the damage you do. Seems like they are going to win this. Yeah. All right. So yeah, you guys got the payload pretty far, so that's nice. All right, let's skip through this. We don't need to see all this. Skip. Uh, skip. I think one more skip. Yeah. There we go. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's see what you do. Okay, so you put your turret there. I think I would prefer you. You're, oh, you guys are actually running. You're running full on bunker, it seems like. Double shield. Symmetra, Toy Drone, Bastion. This is like the ultimate cheese right here. Um, except you guys don't have much heals. But except, <laughs> except for that, this is like the ultimate cheese. Um. Yeah, I'd prefer you to put your turret behind the shield, um, because you you guys basically have you have double shield, so it'll stay alive longer and you'll get more ult charge. This is fine. This that's kind of the behavior I want to see you doing as Stormbringer is just kind of just spamming. Um, a little bit like Junkrat's behavior in a way. I like this angle. I don't like. <laughs> Yeah, see, like, that's, like, that's kind of what I was talking about, you just going in with Overload. Um, I would prefer if you just stayed on that high ground and kind of forced them to go up there with you or just uh, try and focus you down. It's good if they do that because it makes them turn to you um, and your team can get some free damage on them. Out there. Yeah, so... Try and stay on the high ground more. It's another thing. Being on high ground of Scorpion is really good. Because it's easier to hit your shots just basically like a hit scan would. So that monkey, I would prefer you to secondary fire him. Just like I said, the ball before. Um, just like any tank, I'd prefer you to secondary fire them and then accept risking going for the headshot. Um, also, I would. Ex trying to do this here. I think you're, you're just trying to get ultras, but I'd prefer you just to back up. It's better for you to have. You not in their back line because someone could go for you like this monkey. It seems like you're. You might be able to kill him. Yeah, you could probably just secondary fire him to death. He's probably gonna... Tr he might try and bubble dance you, which is like jumping in and out of the bubble, but... I think you can get him. Yeah. That was nice. Like I said, I'll probably prefer you to be not in the back line. Because if they have uh, communication, they'll know you're back here. Oh, you, you got a Lucio, though. That's a good Lucio. He's speeding you back. So they, they have bunkers, so I don't think it was a good idea to try and jump in there, because, you know, he died. Um, if you wanted to stay alive, you can try and uh, Molten Core behind the shield. I think that would probably be nicer, because, you know, the shield's curved and all, so you can't really go from the side. You have to go from kind of behind. Like I said, High Ground's going to be your best friend as Torbjorn, so if you're to Molten Core behind him on the High Ground, you could probably stay alive. And you could have your turret up there just doing annoying damage. Also, you're kind of... Yeah, the payload was already um, taken there. I'd prefer you to just to back up and regroup with your team, not stagger in. Because you basically just gave them all charge there. So, right now I'll just... If I were you, I'd probably just go on the high ground and place my turret, like top right um like on your right over there i wish i had my drawing tool but i don't but on the right over there um you guys probably know what i'm talking about where like the platforms move and stuff on top of that uh, yeah i believe that's a truck like on top of that truck having your turret up there um those moving platforms can be nice too as torvern uh you can just like maneuver on them and go from like different angles and stuff and you can get like free damage on this bunker that was a good focus. I like that. Like I said, always try and focus um, targets that are like high damage, like the Bastion. 
Like, without the Bastion, the whole bunker comp just falls. I guess for them it's pirate ships, so I, they're gonna have like a really hard time trying to set up again. So, you sh you guys should be able to maybe win a fight or two. They do have, do they have ults? Yeah, they do have ults. They have three. They probably they might come up with grav soon. Like I said ult tracking is always good. Also, I like that angle that you're spamming at. That's always good to do. You you yeah, uh, your ult can get damage amplified through that thing by the way just so you know um the reason why the bastion kills you there is you didn't break line of sight of him he stayed in his line of sight so i'll try and hide behind a wall if you ever you notice him up there seems like your team's winning maybe um you can call out to your team that if he's top right if he's actually like destroying your team up there um just let your team know and they can focus him So instead of beating your turret there, you probably could have just went up and killed that Arisa. It probably would have been better. But she's dead anyway, so it's whatever. <laughs> yeah, like I said before, you're getting your ult crazy fast. You get it like each fight. So that's always good. Ult charge is really important to Sorbonne. and that's kind of what makes him good. It's like he has his ult all the time. Um, Here, I probably wouldn't ult. Because your team already used an ult and you guys got two picks. That's something you can just uh, notice. Just look at the kill feed um, and see uh, if if or when your uh, team dies, the enemy team dies. It would probably be better if you just saved your ult there and used the next fight. Like I said before, it's going to be really, really hard for them to set up on points, so it's going to be way easier for you guys, especially since you have double shield and everything. Yeah, that's um, a sound cue thing. So if you're wearing headphones, um, you would notice like what direction uh, she's shooting from, that Ursa. You could kill her. That turns out it's fine. Kind of, I like the angle of that. Like I said, I probably prefer high ground. High ground's really nice. Best friend, as I said before. It's a good pick on him. Yeah, just stay in the back line. Shoot into him. Try and get some nice headshots in. That's good. Um, yeah, this, this angle's fine. Just try, like, if you're in the at angle, don't go into their team. Um, I like how you know, like, where the health packers are, too. That's always a good thing to know. Um, just in case your healers aren't there, since you guys only have, well, you do have BAP now. Your, um, sw your sim switched off, but. Yeah, that's always a good thing to know where the health packs are, just in case your healers aren't there. Yeah, if I were you, I probably wouldn't go that aggressive. Once again, try and stay back with your team more. Or just be on the high ground. Just so you can get those off angles and it's harder for the enemy team to reach you. Yes, yeah, so right here I would focus the Bastion. This is a good spam. Seems like you're not doing much, but in reality, you're... Probably what helped kill that Bastion there. Probably killed him. So that was good. That was a good job by you. Seems like you guys are winning this. I hope you guys win this. And oh nope, <laughs> the hawk hooked you the Sigma in. Yeah, this is a fine chase. Let's destroy her. Nice. All right. So. Um, the main issues I saw here was, uh, ult usage and positioning. So, when using your ult, try and go from, uh, the high ground or different angles. Don't go in to the enemy team. 
Um, it's kind of ties into the positioning issue I was um, said about, but yeah, try and not use your ult like in the enemy team. You can go from far away. You can just spray from far away, and you can just snipe people with the lava. It can go pretty far. Um, you can test the angles and like the practice range and stuff. You can see how far it goes, but um, try and play on the high ground more um, for positioning because I seen it seemed like you were on the ground a lot. Um, which is fine sometimes, but I would prefer you most of the time to be on the high ground because if you have your turret like on an off angle and it's just like shooting down on the enemy team, like especially if they don't have a hit scan, like what are they supposed to do? Like um, you're just going to get a lot of all charge and you can maybe even get some picks off if you're just spamming and stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, thank you to this person for submitting the clip in. And thank you guys for the support as always, and I'll talk to y'all later. Yeah. Everybody knows that I'm breaking down. Everybody knows I ain't faking now. Everybody knows my heart's vacant now. Yeah, she hates me now. I made mistakes, but now I don't ever want to be alone. I don't really ever feel at home. On my own, in the zone. That's the only way I know. Feeling low, about to blow back up. Here I won't ever let the doubt creep in. Gotta pop a couple more aspirin. I don't think I'll ever let you 